first impression one has of the Beinecke when one comes to Yale as a student is uh, that it's an iconic building, a brilliant architectural creation. That came in 1970. The Beinecke was still fairly new. Um, stunning, you know, magnificent place to go and uh, to see all sunlight ref reflected through, refl refracted through the um, uh, beautiful marble walls. It was an, an inspiring. I guess my first formal encounter with the Beinecke as a, as a researcher was indirect because I was doing a term paper in economic history as a first year graduate student and I found some amazing 17th and 18th century political pamphlets in the open stacks of the Sterling Library. Uh, it had to do with the enclosure movement in Great Britain. There were sort of political protests and uh, diatribes against the, against the uh, enclosing landlords. Um, when I, I used these materials, and then when I called them to the attention of the librarian, uh, I learned that soon thereafter they were moved over to the Mighty Beach. <laughs> they shouldn't really have been in the open stacks in the first place. Well, as president, I uh, am, of course, the person who appoints the director of the Beinecke Library, and I've uh, you know, had the pleasure of working with uh, the, the successive directors, four, four directors in my time, uh, going back to Ralph Franklin. Um, and I led searches that led to the appointment of Barbara Shaler and then Frank Turner and subsequently E.C. Schroeder. Um, I've developed a close relationship with each of those directors and enjoyed working with all of them. I think they've all done a fabulous job of sustaining the organization. One of the things that I've really enjoyed seeing in recent years is, that, is uh, an increased collaboration between the Beinecke and other uh, of, the, of the units at Yale museums and academic departments. Um, uh, uh, one example is uh, when Fred Koch gave his magnificent collection of, uh, of musical manuscripts to the uh, Beinecke. The, the, the Beinecke uh, uh, immediately worked together with the Institute of Sacred Music and in some cases the British Arts Center to put on a, a remarkable series of performances and exhibitions that related to, um, that related to these musical manuscripts. Uh, the, increasingly, I think the Beinecke has collaborated with uh, the museums to mount joint exhibitions, uh, sometimes displayed in one of the art museums, sometimes at the Beinecke. Um, and I think that brings tremendous value. It's also great to see the Beinecke reaching out to faculty with expertise to help them uh, also, not just in their research, but to curate exhibitions and to make, and to make uh, uh, the whole community aware of some of the great treasures that the Beinecke holds. The Beinecke is an extraordinary scholarly resource, and it, it, it serves the needs, of course, of the Yale scholarly community brilliantly. But more than that, it's, it's an extraordinary asset globally to the world of scholarship. I've been so many places where I've talked to scholars who have told me that the treatment they received at the Beinecke, the level of service, the attention of the librarians uh, uh, to their needs, the, the very, very friendly uh, uh, attitude to outside researchers is something they truly value. Indeed, many, many scholars have told me that among all the rare book and manuscript archives that, they've, uh, that they know of, the Beinecke is by far the best place to work, uh, just because of the uh, value, you know, the extraordinary value of the collections and the terrific um, attitude of the staff who are so proud of it and want to show it off in, uh, in all its glories to everyone who works there.